So this is my um PC. I've been procrastinating repasting it and uh, replacing the OEM 128GB M.2 drive. Also upgrading it from Debian 11 to Debian 12. But uh, we're going to be doing a fresh reinstall on that and addressing all the hardware issues in this video. Also setting up a dock. So I did bring this uh, computer on a trip to Korea. So if you want a more like straightforward uh, review style video of using it, uh, that video is, uh, well, still out there. So enough background. Let's get to, well, disassembly. There are five screws at the bottom of this uh, PC, but uh, due to a lack of nylock when I uh, originally started this, uh, I guess, project, um, there's only one to unscrew. So there's also a large uh, lithium polymer cell inside, so it's best to remove the back plastic starting around the control key area and be a bit gentle. From there, there are also, well, two fan screws and three screws attached to the heat sink uh, with one short one at the far end. So let's take a look at that heat sink. Uh, so the heat sink looks like it's been covered in vacuum cleaner dust, uh, but um, I did buy this model a few years back and uh, at this point it's uh, relatively old. I ended up uh, just clearing it out and air dusting it and finally uh, using some Arctic Silver MX-6 to put it all back together. Uh, based off the uh, replacements for this fan, I think it's a 30 by 30 by 4 millimeter. Well, uh, fan based on some of the replacements uh, people uh, have been doing. I followed uh, this uh, with a little stress test. Um, it actually was doing quite well. But this footage is, well, cheating a little bit. Uh, the back of the case isn't on. So, now to address a secondary issue. Uh, well, the rattling noise. It turned out to be one of the screws that did attach to this metal plate. To fix this, uh, I think we're just going to attach uh, some uh, Loctite 222 to the screw and put it back in. Um, Loctite 222 is meant for like eyeglasses and jewelry and stuff, so it's not instantly gonna like create a uh, bond that's gonna be hard to take out. But if you want to have a challenge of the Dremel tool in the future, use some of the Loctite Red for uh, automotive. Hopefully um, this stuff will keep the screws in and I'll be able to remove them in the future without damaging the case. I also noticed uh, the back might also act somewhat like a heat sink because these indentions seem to fit towards components on the board. So on that back piece of metal, I just added some uh, 0 0.5 millimeter thermal pads over there where I saw the indentions. I also swapped the 128GB M.2 drive with another uh, 2242 drive, this time uh, 512 gigabytes capacity. Um, well, a 4x uh, upgrade. So popping the back on is pretty easy if you start from the Ethernet port side. But something to note, this doesn't use uh, M2 screws like a lot of laptops do. So I ended up buying a generic screw kit with uh, M1.0 to like M1.8 screws. And the M1.4 ones seem to fit. Um, I don't know if they're the proper screws for the computer, but uh, they don't seem to cross thread and that's good enough. So um, I guess uh, in other words, it should work. So I didn't use thread locker on the back. Uh, this is mainly due to the fear that if I remove this in the future, it could possibly damage the case. And littering screws outside the case is way better than littering screws inside the case. But uh, both the options are probably pretty bad. Um, moving on though, the installation isn't really much of a headache. Aside from, well, some vertigo, I guess. Um, the onboard uh, screen is, uh, well, essentially going to be sideways in the BIOS or sideways on an external monitor. But if you're installing uh, using the typical Debian installer, uh, just go with the external monitor and uh, deal with the uh, computer screen being sideways. After uh, Debian was uh, installed, I proceeded to hack apart my CH root script I had for my uh, auto installer. And most of the uh, packages uh, were installed from that. 
so I could easily set up my i3wm setup. I also repeated the bind uh, super to shift trick I did with the old installation. Unfortunately though, um, with Debian 12, the uh, backlight wasn't recognized until I ended up both changing uh, Grub's like default uh, configs to add like some kernel parameters and uh, writing a script because, uh, well, even after the fix, X backlight and brightness CTL weren't working. So the script essentially just tees values into brightness. But after that, I was able to bind the keys in the i3 configuration to have everything work properly. Um, during this time, I experienced some occasional screen tearing, but um, this would be like kind of at random and uh, would instantly update as soon as the information on the screen changed. Uh, it happened every like 30 minutes to like an hour plus. But uh, since it appeared extremely infrequently and I was messing with a bunch of other settings, I don't know exactly what fixed it. Um, it appears to be gone now, though. Oh, I did add a uh, X11 entry with uh, tear free. So maybe that's the thing that caused it. It was in my previous Debian 11 install. So moving on, though, uh, USB-C works uh, well enough with this system. So I ended up making a script for uh, docking the computer. It was originally meant to be launched with a UDEV rule, but unfortunately it seems this thing hangs with device removal. Also, um, if you press uh, Alt-Shift-M and then press Escape, it should, well, go back to normal. Uh, the script also handles uh, HDMI and should be uh, easy to change for well, my other uh, KVM devices. Final notes, would I buy one of these uh, new? No, do not buy one new. Uh, they're really overpriced, uh, at least on the uh, like US vendor sites. And if you were willing to order off AliExpress, uh, keep in mind you're paying for a uh, laptop that is going to need uh, some DIY stuff to be reliable and it's probably gonna have a shorter life expectancy than uh, a larger computer. But if you just really want a modern um PC and if you're wanting to uh, buy a used one and find a deal, it might be worth getting. Oh, uh, one more important thing I feel like I need to mention. There is a touchpad bug in a firmware update that will break the computer's functionality. And since uh, this is a narration edit and post, I'll just add some uh, benchmarks for those that are interested. Steve, uh, another YouTuber, uh, well, warned me about it. So um, he also made a video uh, for a novel alternative to the uh, GPD micro PC. I'll link the video in the description. Also, I preemptively apologize about the clickbait title. So in the same spirit, um, as the content of the video, I'm going to suggest uh, two inexpensive alternatives if you just want Unix or Linux on the go. Some of the HP Giordano models can run NetBSD and in my opinion have a slightly nicer form factor. Uh, if you want uh, x86 though, the CFE1 from Panasonic will run Linux and has a x86 processor. There is also the FCM1. And if there's any interest, I could test it out in the future. So, peace.